Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an interview and today's guest is Lamont from the YouTube channel Days of French and Swedish. Lamont is an Australian guy who has made it a mission to learn Swedish to a high level without actually setting food outside of Australia for the last 20 years. So today we're going to pick his brain a little bit in uh, this conversation. Lamont has also interviewed me on his channel, so definitely go ahead and check out his channel and our conversation there as well. All the links are going to be in the description box below. But now, without further ado, let's get this started, and I really hope you enjoy. Hi guys, I'm sitting here, oh, actually I'm not sitting, I'm, I'm standing, but uh, <laughs> I'm finally sitting down with Lamont from Days of uh, French and Swedish. Yes. Hi Lamont, how is, it, how is it going? Yeah, I'm really well, thanks. How are you? All good, all good. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, so uh, Lamont has been on my red radar for quite a long time. I've watched many of your videos and um, I really like your style, your way of presenting your ideas. You make really good points. Uh, it's also a joy to listen to your English, actually. <laughs> I like it. yeah I like your pronunciation no, yeah. don't ask me why maybe it's may, maybe it's the Australian accent yeah. although I don't think you have a, such a strong Australian accent it's not strong but yeah, yeah it's it, as, yeah. Australians can definitely pick it as Australian okay. but it's yeah it's not a, a very broad Australian accent like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right so um I definitely recommend checking out uh, Lamont's uh, uh, channel. Uh, my first question for you today, Lamont, is uh, what brings a um, an Australian guy to learn Swedish, uh, a language like Swedish, and not only just learn a little bit of, of Swedish, but really committing to going deep into 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 this language? Yeah. Um... Well, it started when a Finnish woman stayed with us here in Australia about four years ago, um, and it was it was kind of the randomness of it that was the charm. Um, so we didn't really know her, and I won't go into the story of why she ended up staying with us, but she stayed with us. She's lovely. Hannah, hi, if you're watching. Um, um, Moi. And yeah, sorry, I, don't, I can only say kitos. Um, um, and she uh, just on her, sort of on her way back, she ended up staying with us twice for a, a few days each time. And on her way back to the airport, she said, uh, well, I've stayed with you, so you'll have to come and stay with me in Helsinki. We just sort of made this plan that I don't think either of us took very seriously although that is my wife and I but I mm -hmm. um, I tried to kind of pretend to take it seriously I was like well if we really commit that to going to Finland in maybe a year and a half or so um, then mm -hmm. then we can make it happen and it turns out we couldn't make it happen and uh, we still haven't been and that was almost four years ago now but um, it just sort of felt like a good excuse for me to get back into language learning because I uh, did do some German in school and mm -hmm. it was one of my preferred subjects but I still didn't I, I wasn't committed enough in school to do any work for any subject really um, so like I just I just I don't know how you say it in in, in Swedish. You would say uh, Like I I don't give a crap about it. I didn't give a crap about it back then. Um, um, and the point is, I didn't I didn't speak any German, but I always felt like I should. And mm. I had sort of tried to force myself to learn a little bit of German here and there since finishing school, which was about ten years before that. And I just thought if we're actually really going to go to Europe, that might be an excuse to learn a language and, and do it properly this time. Um, but I didn't choose Finnish because uh, Swedish just seemed a little bit more logical. Um, you know, I read that it had some similarities with German, so I thought, well, that'll make it a little bit easier. I didn't speak enough German for that to even make it, like, 
worth it. It's not like I was like, oh, I've already got a head start in German because my German was that non-existent. Mm -hmm. So I just, with the population of Sweden and everything, Swedish just seemed logical, seemed easier. That part turned out to be right. Um, I don't, I don't really remember what I was thinking exactly, but uh -huh. I just, some of the things that I thought at the time did turn out to be right. Like I thought, well, maybe there's also like Danish and Norwegian that are kind of new, mutually mm -hmm. intelligible. I don't think I knew that. I think I just guessed that and it turned out <laughs> to be correct. Okay. Um, and it also just sounded easier than Finnish and that also turned out to be correct too. Uh, and honestly, I just expected to only get as far in it as I had ever gotten in German and then just leave it and forget about it and go to something else. I never, or I expected that we would go there and then maybe I would develop a real passion for it and everything. Okay. But it turned out that it, one, one of the things happened from each side. So yes, I did develop a real passion for it, but we never actually went there. Um, oh, and, okay. and I think that the, just the better I got at it, the more I surprised myself that you could actually, that, that someone having not been there could actually get that good. Uh, yeah. Not that it's amazing or anything, but um, yeah. it, it, I got to a level where I could converse, which is True. basically further than I'd ever gotten in German in four years of school. Um, but, by the way, you made me curious now. Uh, I'd like to, to know what was it that uh, that stopped you, that prevented you from uh, from actually focusing on, on German, given that, as you said, you liked it. Uh, so what was it that, that really mm, came in the way there, got in the way? I mean, I liked it in when compared with other school subjects. Um, mm -hmm. I liked the teacher. I liked the class. We were able to be fairly... Um, it wasn't a very strict class. We, we could talk among each other quite freely. And, um, but also, I think, unfortunately, the teacher maybe let me get away with a bit much in the early days, and it never really mattered to her whether I did any homework. or And then it started not even making a difference whether I even did the work in class. And then it just became a thing that she expected me to not really do anything because I just, school was just a lot of fun for me in terms of being around friends. And okay. that's all I ever really cared about. And I yeah. sometimes had these moments of like, oh, I should really, you know, focus on work at school. But then you get there and your friends are there and you just end up, I was just, I was just a terrible distracted teenage student like um a person yeah. <laughs> a normal person. Yeah. yeah i think i was a little bit more distracted than a normal person actually but i think i probably did like it but not enough to to do the hard work especially school because it's not like we did things you know we mm -hmm. didn't do things like like i do now with languages which is yeah you know, exactly. just read stuff and not mind if you don't understand everything. And you, you do it in a not, it wasn't overly formal, but it was a bit too formal to really make it fun. Um, yeah. The teacher did her best, but I, you know, the curriculum was just a bit too yeah. strict for that. Did, and it did was... you have other, other things that you were doing with the passion that you didn't, you, did, you, you didn't uh, end up having for German? I mean, yes. <laughs> Uh, so some other passions <laughs> getting in the way uh, of, of school. Or... Yeah, I mean, that's the story of my life. Other passions getting in the way of everything. Including... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my big thing back then was cricket, which is going to confuse a bunch of people watching this. Um, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, but, Not expecting but, that. <laughs> but, yeah, cricket is a big thing in Australia, and I was oh. one of the keenest cricket fans in the world. I mean, no, actually, India's just got that whole thing covered, but I was one of the keenest cricket fans in Australia, um, and that's just all I really cared about at school. Were you playing cricket as well? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what mm -hmm. prevented me learning German at school, and that's so that's 
I didn't even have enough of it that when I went back to it, when I sort of thought it would be time to learn a language, it wasn't, it was just more logical to start a new one. If it, you know, I, we, I thought we had this idea that we'd go to Copenhagen and then up to Stockholm and then across to Finland. And one day we yeah. still may, but we haven't done it yet. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, Scandinavia and Nordic, Nordic countries and Nordic languages, some is, well, one, one of the questions that I get uh, very often, and you probably do too, mm. is why learn a Nordic language when uh, it's obvious that everybody in Scandinavia and in Finland mm. uh, speak English very well at all ages. So what's your answer to this question? Well, there's a bit of a trade-off there, I think, that at the time that I started learning Swedish, I didn't appreciate. I I, people think that maybe I didn't realize that most people in Sweden speak English. I totally mm -hmm. did realize that. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, that's why I thought it would just be a bit of fun. I didn't actually expect to get this far. But there's a trade off there with that if you go to, say, China for a, sig a significant period of time, so you go there to live for a year or something, then you'll be expected to learn Chinese, at least mm -hmm. to, you'll be expected to try um yeah. because you don't really have a choice right that's that everyone there speaks it and and most of them don't speak english i th i think at least to my knowledge and there are lots mm -hmm. of countries like that where where it's like well this is the accepted language here even france still ish a little bit it's like well if you're going to be here for quite a long time you should speak french because some of us don't speak english some of us don't like speaking english whatever and because of that you don't actually get that much credit for learning french like or learning chinese say so, i mean uh -huh. not, not that i'm Point. in it for credit yeah but you you don't like if you if i tell someone on in australia that i lived in china for five years they'll be like oh so you speak chinese then so you speak chinese yeah. exactly. whereas yeah. i know an australian guy who lived in norway for 10 years doesn't uh -huh. speak a word of norwegian and it's same, quite, the same happens in Finland for many people, many, many people in Finland. Yeah, so. yeah. So I think you, and it's not credit that I'm after, but when I speak to someone, I love that thing of like, they're like, how is it that you speak this language? Like, what yeah. what's going on here? You get a little bit of that in even in German, like with the tiny amount of German that I speak, I remember speaking to this woman who was here in in bad German. And mm -hmm. she just had this look on her face like, you know some German kind of thing. Uh -huh. And, and you know, when it comes to Swedish, especially when you get to my kind of level, mm -hmm. where you can, if you're in a bit of a noisy environment or something, or you have something that you've kind of rehearsed to say, you can go a couple of phrases, maybe even halfway through a simple conversation before they kind of go, where are you from, by the way? And I just yeah. say, oh, <laughs> here. And I love that moment where they're just like, so why do you speak Swedish? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just think it's so good. Um, and I, yes. it really doesn't bother me whether, you know, whether I'm wasting my time, quote unquote, wasting my time or not. Because as an Australian living in Australia, sorry, I was going to say a native English speaker living in Australia, mm -hmm. I don't need to learn any language. I'm wasting my time learning any language at all. Like anyway, if I, yeah. <laughs> if I wanted to, if I wanted to not waste my time, I wouldn't be learning a language at all. But if I did, re if if I wanted to learn a language but not waste my time, it would be Arabic or Chinese or something that is spoken more often around here. But I just don't see it like that. I don't. It, it's just not. It, it's an interest, not not a. Yeah. Uh, I'm not being forced. Yes, and I have a third point on this, and that is uh, learning a language is not only <clears throat> a matter of adding a means of communication to, to your uh, tools, but it's also uh, you're opening up a, a complete, uh, an entire world of contents and opportunities and people to meet uh, and to, you know, to bond with on a, on a much uh, deeper level than just by using a lingua franca. Yeah. Uh, 
but especially i mean maybe the most important thing is getting access to so much content and fun and just entertainment you know even very simple fun that you can have watching uh watching a movie or uh, some um i like for example i love um a stand up comedy yeah you know so my maybe my my high, my highest goal is to enjoy stand up comedy in a foreign language and uh, and i can do that today in a number of languages and that's just uh, every time i i laugh at a joke in another language i i laugh like twice Yeah. Twice as much, <laughs> and you probably know why, right? For the joke and for the fact that, oh wow, I got this in language X, you know? Yeah, and yeah. it's almost stand-up comedy <clears throat> is is one of the highest, if not the <clears throat> highest, kind of <throat> level of comprehension, because even when the joke is not linguistic, it normally is still linguistic in some way like it'll be it'll be the very words they choose to say something that makes it sound yes. funny um and and i just think i i envy you because i'm assuming maybe uh, that you can understand ismo in in finnish yes yeah, he's yeah. my favorite he's yeah. my favorite Absolute well he's favorite. he's one of my favorites and i don't speak <laughs> finnish i like him just even with subtitles on And it's like with subtitles you're missing 50% probably oh, of yeah, what's actually great. going on. Oh, But he, we're, we're talking about by the way we're talking about Ismo Leikola mm. who is a uh, Finnish uh, stand-up comedian who uh, who does gigs in Finnish but also in in English so you can you can enjoy him in English as well if you want or in Finnish with subtitles obviously yeah i mean he's but that... the jokes are different that, that's that's really that's yeah. really interesting as well he's so. he's that funny that even with subtitles on it's still it's still <laughs> funny and um yeah so yeah i mean i i haven't found any swedish stand up that i'm uh really crazy about yet uh, mm-hmm. but i have under, understood most of um there's There's a guy named um, David Bantra, um, who is actually he's a judge on their version of it's it's either Sweden's Got Talent, yeah, it's Sweden's Got Talent, mm-hmm. which in their country is just called Talent. Um, uh, he's a judge on that, but he's also a stand-up, and he, even that actually is a very interesting kind of cultural difference because his wife was quite a high-up politician. Um, I think she's retired now. But she mm-hmm. was like, maybe even deputy prime minister or something, um, okay. and and his comedy sometimes is a little bit about his wife and just about how people react to him and and him and his wife and stuff like that, and I don't think that would ever work in Australia, because uh-huh. in Australia, people will find the smallest things to pick on politicians for even if it's got nothing to do with them so like something like yeah. your husband being a stand up comedian would not work because they would find a joke and they'd say this this is inappropriate for all these reasons and i kind of love that i mean obviously i can tell you that and you can say oh wow that's interesting but i love that i've been able to watch this guy and actually see you know what this is like for them and it's just yeah. it wouldn't really be the same with subtitles or No, that that that's because there, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> there is so much culture going on yeah. in in the background and sometimes even <laughs> in foreground. But uh, mm-hmm. there's so much cu- culture going on in uh, in stand-up comedy, uh, and and culture is also a big part of language. So when you when you learn a language, inevitably you kind of have to learn about the culture as well. Sometimes through the language, but you also have to study the culture in in other ways uh, to be able to use that language and especially to understand that language better. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think you can tell when someone has learned a language only as a mere as a, as a, yeah as a mere uh, a tool uh, uh, for communication without really digging deep into into the culture. I think you can tell. Mm. Uh, by the way they uh, they they use the language yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah absolutely and even if you can't tell you there's sort of something in the back of your head that says this is something mm. weird going on yeah there's something yeah. yeah yeah okay so going back to to um language learning i've watched a lot of your videos and 
Um, one of the questions that I that, that I have for for you is, um, could it be that you are sometimes, maybe not always, but sometimes more interested in the in the, the process of language learning per se, rather than the pleasure of using the language. Uh, I mean, of uh, uh, being immersed in the language. I mean, the beauty of the language. Could it could it be that the fact of uh, okay, let's see how I can learn this language effectively and and to a very high level. These things per se drives you more than the beauty or the pleasure that you get from the language itself. Could it be? I think I've gone through phases of that interesting me more than uh, the language itself. And so I, I remember in about April, I sort of, I almost wanted to start a new language just mm -hmm. to see what it would be like if I applied a different method to the one I applied with Swedish, which wasn't much of a method at all because I was sort of still figuring a lot of stuff out. So I've mm -hmm. kind of adapted quite uh, severely in my Swedish. I've changed a lot in how I learn. So I wanted to start a new one in April just to see what where I would start from the beginning kind of thing. Um, but not as an ongoing thing. I think I'm still more interested in the language itself and particularly at the moment, if I am interested in uh, the process of how, at the moment it's more about how to really build up that spoken fluency uh, as in, you know, in the best way possible. And I know that the main thing is just to speak a lot, um, but I'm sort of, I still, I'm really fascinated by how much of it is subconscious and things that we don't exactly know the answers to. Uh, because sometimes I say things that I didn't even know that I knew how to say. Uh, but I still have this feeling as, as, as they come out of my mouth, I'm like, I know that's right. I've heard it before. Um, I don't know where. So I, I kind of like that. So it's a, it's a little bit of both. I like being able to use it. I like being able to read and, and, and speak, but I do also like the, the human brain is, is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I like mm -hmm. kind of observing it change even though it's quite it's quite a difficult thing to observe because exactly. you're looking at it changes it like the um what's it called the uncertainty principle like the the fact that you're thinking about it means your <laughs> means the process itself is somewhat affected if so so it's a uh -huh. weird, it, okay. yeah well, like, so I was kind of referring to... I mean, you, you are your brain, so it's difficult for you to look into your brain because you are uh, are being you are being yourself. So. Exactly, yeah. And, well, like, the ultimate performance, whether it's in language or anything else, is when you do something without... You do something correctly without considering whether that was the correct thing to do. Um, and I feel like it's hard to... I'm, I love those moments, but it's hard to have them and it's certainly hard to enjoy them because the second you sort of go, oh, I'm in that moment of flow, then you're kind of out of it again because you've just observed yeah, this. Yeah, you happening. stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see, I see. Okay. And, um, well, the name of your channel is Days of French and Swedish. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we've talked about Swedish and uh, you're focusing on Swedish right now a lot. What's with your French? Where is it? What happened to your French? Um, I just and what's the plan? And what's the plan for the future? Yeah, um, I'm sort of deliberately not making a plan because mm -hmm. I don't want to give myself a time limit. Like, let's say I say I'm going to uh, start back in French in June 2021, and then I get yeah. to June, and then I my Swedish might still not be at the level that I'm that I'm hoping it will get to. Um, so I feel like it's better just to relax and sort of see what happens. Um, and honestly, I may even never, never pick up French again. Um, mm -hmm. because oh. I was saying on, uh, on the video for my channel that th I started it as like a kind of a 
thing to just a productive what do you call it a productive side project kind of thing um and then it became a, a little bit of an even on an even balance with swedish and then it sort of overtook swedish and then for about a year and a half i did mainly french and and then it it actually at one point almost got up to the same level as my swedish uh so wow. and that was when i was like okay i don't really know what i'm doing here but basically i'm not i do like it and uh, i like it for all sorts of reasons particularly the content that that we talked about um yep. there's a lot of musicians that i really like in in french there's a lot of series that i could watch not just once but many times and get all that all that input um so i do like it but i i'm still not sure that i ever should have started it because it wasn't really for any other reason than that my dad was uh learning it and actually at the time he was living there i think yeah he was living in paris at the time um but it's not like i can sort of practice with him and actually mine mine got a fair bit better fairly quickly and then so he was practicing with me <laughs> anyway but it you don't you don't speak to your own dad in a language that isn't your native language it's just a, <laughs> it's just a thing that doesn't happen um so even my sort of initial reason for getting into it just didn't end up existing in the way that I thought it would and so i'm not saying that i you know french was wrong i'm never going back to it but if i did start again now it would really just be because uh i i like it which is fine um mm -hmm. and and i already have some level of it which is also fine but it wouldn't really be because i have a a drive for it or uh yeah. so so i might sort of decide you know what i'm really keen for this other language that you know yeah. some other language and just <laughs> and start that and in sort of alongside that with where it's at i don't think it's very far off where i left it it the vocabulary is so similar to english mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that it i helps. think it drops off very slowly um yeah. and even when uh, i was watching your own interview with luca mm -hmm. your chat with luca and uh for the french part i had the subtitles on but after a little while i found that i wasn't really reading them and it uh -huh. cool. i sort of started reading them at first and i didn't mean to stop but then i realized that i wasn't really reading them so uh and it actually still even if i try to say like one very simple thing to someone in french just as an example like oh in french they say this i find that my head immediately has that thing where ready Right. yeah it's right. like it, I'll, i'll try to say like oh, i don't know what to say next but i mean i mean to say i don't know what to say next but i'll say oh, je sais pas, and then i'll be like no i don't know what to say next is so it's it's actually there is something still there it's only been six months yeah. but um, mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not worried about it uh what's happening yeah. with it yeah okay cool yeah. so even even if it if it were to 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 drop completely you wouldn't be that sad i know that you you have said that, <laughs> that would be like that would be like a tragedy for you to let yes. the language drop completely <laughs> um not not really i just i feel like i gave time to it that that I've given more time to other things that became nothing in my life. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. yeah, sure. I understand. So, uh, what about uh, the moment you you get to the point where you say, "Hey, you know what? I'm satisfied with my Swedish. That's exactly where I want it to be. Now I can explore other things." Would you do do you think that you would you would start a new language or would you devote your time to some completely different project? I think it would depend where I am in my life and what I'm up to. I would love to be in a position where uh I could just start a new language because uh because of wanting to learn a new language or wanting to get wanting to take my French up to a high level. Um but it's 
quite I'm sort of realizing and this is one of the things that I did realize about six months ago when I put French aside was that I think I'm at a place where I need to give a certain amount of time to uh, more workish things um, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, even things like I sort of don't like talking about this heaps but things like developing online businesses and stuff you know it's it's not easy and if I was being um, shrewd about it I would only give I wouldn't even worry about Swedish um, but there's there's a there's the fact that I don't feel like anyone has any need to listen to me if I can't demonstrate that I can get one language to a very high level and and B there's the fact that I just I'm, I'm not comfortable with putting my whole personal life and everything that I've that I enjoy doing aside just to work on an online business and whatever but mm -hmm. you know so I think that m I actually think that for most English native speakers certainly if they're looking to do something kind of bigger with their lives than what they've already done learning a language might not be the best way to go about that um, mm -hmm. I think it's a good place to start because I think it teaches you a lot of things about yourself and and your own motivation and your own tendencies towards or away from procrastination uh, and about mm -hmm. how you learn but I I think it's a little bit like meditation it's sort of it's not the goal itself like well not in, sure. in, a, in a way meditation is the goal itself but but you don't meditate so that you can so that you're meditating <laughs> like yeah you kind of meditate to have more mental clarity and i think learning a language is another kind of way to do that in a way um and so i'm really not sure as to to answer your question it mm -hmm. depends i may find that in a year or two or three uh, that I'm at a perfect place where I can say let's start a whole new language at you know wherever the world is at that time who knows where we'll be up to with technology we might have we might have v virtual like native teachers native speakers essentially in the same room as you even though they're not in the same room or something um, and just I'll just explore what comes up I, I'm not I don't know yeah, I'm just okay. focusing on Swedish until then. I think it's perfectly fine not to not to have your the rest of your life planned from mm -hmm. from now until until the time comes. So um, I'm totally with you. Um, I also don't know what what I will do after when I fi I'm finally okay with my Georgian. Mm -hmm. Will I learn an, another language or will I just keep the the ones that I that I can speak now? I I don't know. Uh, I don't know, and I, I will decide uh, when the time comes. You know, uh, I really think that you, we talked about going going with the flow in the other uh, the other v w video that we made for your channel, and uh, I actually apply that also to my life in a certain in a certain way, so that I I tend and I try not to um, over plan. I mean, plan plan too much uh, ahead, you know, too far ahead. And I think um, the way I, I'm enjoying my life right now is, uh, I mean, I'm enjoying my life right now more than I, than I used to do when I was trying to control things and to plan ahead and stuff like that. So yeah. this was definitely very, very interesting. So any, any other things that you want to, to talk about or? <laughs> I, I feel like it's a somewhat of a downer to to kind of say oh I, I, I don't really know that languages are that important and I don't know what I'll be doing in <laughs> a couple of years um, I guess I would just say that if for me and my journey with what's ended up being one language because I started with Swedish and I'm still studying Swedish it's just been a, a journey of um, being okay with not being like a super polyglot kind of um because in you know, i look at it and say well it's been almost four years now so i kind of expect to to be better but at the same time i never expected to get anywhere near this good when i started swedish mm -hmm. and exactly. whether it was four years or less and i and i didn't 
and that's then taking into account that almost 18 months of that was entirely focused on French. Um, so I think for people watching, you know, you do you, and I've said that before in videos, but um, just if, if you want to speak a bunch of languages, go speak, you know, go learn a new one every day. Um, but do that because you want to and not because not because you think not because you see Stefano here who's been studying languages for 20 years and can speak a whole bunch of them now and, um, but you know yeah I also think you don't you don't really decide to become a polyglot you just become one through your through your passion and and and, and because you like what you what you do so yeah that, that was a very good point yes Thanks. yeah no but I'm I am very impressed by people like Stefano, so um, it's my, always my temptation to try and become like that, but you can't rush it. It's taken him 20 years. And, uh, yeah, no hurry, no hurry. I mean, uh, yeah, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't rush it, or, or as we said uh, before, the, the, the results won't, won't, uh, won't come if you're not having fun, if you're not just doing, doing what you like. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Lamont, thank you very, very much for this chat. It was a pleasure to have you on my channel. Oh, thanks for having me, Stefano. It was a pleasure. And I will put the link in the description box so everybody check out uh, Days of French and Swedish. There's a, a bunch of information and uh, good tips there. So definitely, yeah, you laugh, but it's true. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.